This is review for test two, part two. These next several are asking you to write the equation of the line in slope intercept form with certain pieces of information. This one starts out with parallel to this equation through this point. The reason they give you this equation is so that you can pull the slope out of there. So to get the slope out of here, we need to rewrite this equation for y. So subtract 2x from both sides and then divide by 5, which gives us y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Now this 2 right here doesn't matter. This is the old y-intercept. The only reason we are doing this is so that we can get the slope. So the slope of the original line was negative 2 fifths. We're going to keep that same slope and put it together with that point. So using point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, I'm just going to stuff in that information. So this is y minus negative 1 equals negative 2 fifths times x minus 3. Of course, minus and minus is plus. Distribute the negative 2 fifths through this parentheses is negative 2 fifths x plus 6 fifths. And this is y plus 1. All we have to do now to get the y alone is subtract 1 from both sides. And you can let the calculator do the arithmetic for you on 6 fifths minus 1, which will be positive 1 fifth. So that's the equation of the line. Same kind of problem, but it wants us to do perpendicular to this line through this point. I need to rewrite this equation for y so that I can find out what that original slope is. So subtract 3x from both sides. Divide everything by negative 2. So y equals positive 3 halves x minus 4. That y-intercept doesn't matter. What matters is that slope. Now the slope of that original line is 3 halves. They're asking us for the slope of the line perpendicular, which means the slope I want to use is the negative reciprocal of this 3 halves, which is negative 2 thirds. So using our point slope form to get started, we'll have y minus 3 equals m, which is negative 2 thirds, times x minus a negative 5. Clean that up a little, minus a minus is plus. Go ahead and distribute negative 2 thirds through that parentheses is negative 2 thirds x minus 10 thirds. Over here I have y minus 3. To get rid of that, I need to add 3 to both sides. You can let your calculator do that arithmetic for you. So negative 10 thirds plus 3 is negative 1 third. So there is the equation of the line that is perpendicular to that original line. Passing through these points, now notice you don't have an initial equation. We are going to use the point slope form, which means we've got to have the slope to start with. So I need to use the slope formula with those two points. So 6 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 5. Minus a minus is going to give me plus, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So let's stuff in y minus 6 equals negative 7 thirds times x minus 2. Now I used the 2, 6. You could just as easily have used the 5, negative 1. Distribute the negative 7 thirds through the parentheses is negative 7 thirds x plus 14 thirds. Last step is to add 6 to both sides, which gives us y equals negative 7 thirds x plus 32 thirds. In the transformations and in the order they should be done. This is the order you need to look. Number one, horizontal shift. You'll find your horizontal shifts inside the parentheses or the brackets or the radicals. So horizontal shift happens right in here. And it's opposite. X plus one tells you that you're actually going to move to the left one. The next thing you want to look for is any stretching or shrinking. Stretching and shrinking is this number here that's in front of the brackets. A three in front of that tells us that we're going to multiply the y by 3. That is a vertical stretch. Reflection has to do with a negative sign in front, like this one or this one. There's no negative here or inside in front of the x, so there is no reflection. The vertical shift 
is the number that happens after the brackets or after the radical or after the parentheses. And the minus 2 tells us to shift this down 2. That is a vertical shift. Same steps over here, horizontal shift. Look inside, right here at the plus 1, tells me I need to move to the left 1. Stretch or shrink refers to a number that's out in front of here. There is no number out here, so there is no stretching and shrinking. Reflective in front of the radical tells me that I'm going to reflect over the x-axis for that one. But we also have a negative inside that's in front of the x here. That means we're going to reflect over the y-axis. So the negative on the outside is what told us to reflect over the x-axis. The negative inside reflects over the y-axis. There is no vertical shift. Same steps. Horizontal shift. Look inside. This says x minus 1, which means we're going to move to the right one. As far as a stretch and shrink, we have a factor right here. We are going to multiply the y value by 2. Because of that negative, there is a reflection over the x-axis. Now, instead of saying those two things separately, you could have just said multiply the y value by negative 2. You can do both of those at the same time. Vertical shift, it says plus 5 at the end, so you will move it up 5. Name the domain. Remember, the domain of a function will be all real numbers unless you have a radical, which is the case here and here, or unless you have a fraction, which is the case here and here. So when you're dealing with a radical, you can't take the square root of a negative number, so we want to ensure that what's under the radical sign is positive. So we will do x minus 7 greater than or equal to 0, which gives us x greater than or equal to 7. If we do this in interval notation, this is 7 to infinity. If you want to do set builder notation, it's all x, such that x is greater than or equal to 7. For the fraction, all that matters is the denominator. We are not allowed to have 0 in the denominator, so we set the denominator equal to 0 and solve factors as x plus 6 times x minus 1, which gives us x equals negative 6 or x equals 1. Those are the numbers that are going to be thrown out of the domain. So if we do set builder from here, I can just do this, all x such that x does not equal negative 6 or 1. That's your set voter notation. Your interval notation, it might be better to look at a number line here. Negative 6 and 1 are the numbers that are getting thrown out. So if you want to write interval notation for this, you have to look at negative infinity to negative 6, union, negative 6 to 1, union, 1 to infinity. Obviously, set voter notation is a little bit easier to write. When you're dealing with a radical and a fraction, you have to look at both things. If you look at the radical situation, you are looking at setting that greater than or equal to 0, which gives me x greater than or equal to 2. And if I looked at that on a number line, I'm looking at this. And I think that would be my domain from 2 on up. But this provides a further restriction. On the denominator, we have x minus 5 equal to 0, which gives us x equal to 5. What that really means is x is not allowed to equal 5. So on my number line here, I've got from 2 on up to the right, but I have a hole at 5. So interval notation on that would be 2 with a bracket to 5, parenthesis, union with parenthesis 5 to infinity. Set builder notation would just be all x, such that x is greater than or equal to 2, comma x not equal to 5. Next section is some function operations. 31 asks us to do f of 4. f of 4 just asks us to plug 4 in and do that arithmetic. You can use your calculator and just stuff the 4 in there. You can do it by hand, but either way it works out to be 27 because it's 2 times 4 squared minus 3 times 4 plus 7. 4 squared is 16 times 32 minus 12 plus 7 gives us 27.
Now f plus g is just exactly what it looks like. Add these two functions together. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. Add to that this function, and I'm doing it in a vertical setting only because I'm not going to have room to spread it out. But this lines up perfectly. The 3x's happen to cancel, and we get plus 8. Now f of g of x is asking us to do this. I like this notation better, f of g of x. So starting on the inside, g of x is actually 3x plus 1. So I've gotten rid of this g of x and put 3x plus 1 in its place. Now f of 3x plus 1 is asking me to take this whole 3x plus 1 and stuff it into the f function in place of those x's. So this gets kind of messy. This is 2 times parentheses, 3x plus 1 squared minus 3 times parentheses 3x plus 1 and then plus 7. So I'll have to do some work down here. The 3x plus 1 squared, I need to FOIL that out. 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. When you FOIL that out and combine it, it's 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. But there is a 2 that's in front of that, so I'll do that work right here. That's 18x squared plus 12x plus 2. So that's my partial answer for just this part right here. Then distribute the negative 3 through here will give me negative 9x minus 3. That plus 7 is hanging around there. Now just combine your like terms. There's no other squared item, so it's 18x squared. We have 12x minus 9x is 3x. And we have a 2 minus 3 plus 7 will be 6. So that is our new function, which is the comp composite function f of g of x. The last just asked me what is the domain of f over g. So let's put f over g. 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 was our f function. Our g function is 3x plus 1. So we just did some domain problems a couple minutes ago. Domain refers to this denominator is not allowed to equal 0. So we set 3x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve. Subtract 1 from both sides. Gives us 3x equals negative 1. Divide by 3 x equals negative 1. But remember, that means x is not allowed to equal negative 1 third. That's the number being thrown out of the domain. So your set builder notation is all x, such that x is not equal negative 1 third. And that's probably the easiest way to put it. But if you want to do interval notation, it would be negative infinity to negative 1 third, union with negative 1 third to positive infinity.